And our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being an ummi, unlettered, he's terrified. Somebody's asking you to read and when you can't read, so he says, Ma ana bi qari'in. He said, I'm not learned. So the angel of God commands him a second time, Iqra, read. And again he pleads, he says, Ma ana bi qari'in. I'm not learned. How can I read? The third time, the angel of God, Jibreel alayhi salam, oppresses him hard and he says, Iqra, bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq which means read in the name of the Lord and Cherisher who created. So now, our Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he grasped that what was required for him to do was to repeat, because this Arabic word, Iqra, means to read, to recite, to rehearse, to repeat. So he repeated. So Iqra, bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq. So read in the name of the Lord and Cherisher who created. So he said, Iqra, bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq. So khalaq al-insana min alaq. So he who created man from a mere clot of congealed blood. So he says, khalaq al-insana min alaq. So Iqra, wa rabbuk al-akram. So read, and the Lord is most bountiful. So he says, Iqra, wa rabbuk al-akram. So alladhi allama bil kalam. So he who taught the use of the pen. So he says, alladhi allama bil kalam. So allama al-insana ma'alam ya'alam. So he taught man that which he knew not. So he says, allama al-insana. These were the first five verses revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in that cave of Hira. As soon as the angel departed, sweating all over, terrified, he runs home three miles south to his dear wife, Ummul Muminin Khadijatul Kubra, and he says, Cover me up, cover me up. Something terrible has happened. She covers him up, and when he gets out of his excitement, he explains to her what he had seen and his fears that something has gone wrong with me. You know, we talk about other people getting possessed. In those days, it was so much common, this man, that man, that man, in the time of Jesus, you know, he says the spirits went into 2,000 swines and they ran down the hill and they all got drowned in the Bible. Then spirits went into a fig tree and he dried it up from its very roots. And spirits were going into men and women and animals, everything. So now, in that day and age, he's also fearing that something, I think, has gone wrong with me. What is this? I hear a voice, a voice telling me to read this. and. She said, look, Allah will not allow such a thing to happen to you. You are kind to orphans and the widows, and you are so good, you are so charitable. And she takes him to her cousin Waraka, who was a learned man of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, who was a Christian, Arab Christian. And when he heard the story, he said, you are the messenger of God chosen for these people. I wish I would be alive. I said, these people will persecute you, they'll harm you. But he said, I wish I was alive to defend you then. But these were the first five verses given to him and in the next 23 years of his prophetic life according to the needs telegrams were received telegrams the quran is a book of telegrams this is how allah speaks he doesn't speak like once upon a time the fox and the grave the wolf and the lamb baba black sheep this is not the quran the quran is a concentrated book Four verses. Complete. Chapter is complete. It's an ocean. Now you start thinking about what is this? Ocean. But you read it even with the meaning. He said, now what did I say? What did you say? Uh, so well, God is only one. And what else? He said, well, he doesn't beget and he's not begotten. He's got no father and no son. Yeah, what else? Very difficult. You need a commentary. The Quran is a very concentrated book. Allah talks by telegrams. So, during the next 23 years of his prophetic life, what was given is now contained in this book, the Holy Quran. And it says, when we had reached that point, the Dumini felt that we should, you know, cut it short now. So he says, you know, what you are telling me sounds very good. One day I'd like to call you to my church to speak to my congregation. In my mind I said, that will be the day. But he'd like to call me one day. But I said, you see, all this what you're talking about is not important. It's not important. He said, look, we got the veritable Son of God. He died for our sins. He absolved us from all sins. You see, such a nice nice cushy feeling one gets somebody paying for you you know you can speed away 200 kilometers an hour and when you get caught mr salim Muhammad is there to pay your fine how nice huh would you care to slow down sally is there with this half a dozen supermarkets you know to pay your fines for you how nice 
You have a headache and I take the pill and you get healed. How nice. You have a rotten appendix, operate mine because mine is healthy. Huh? Look, this is something that the man loves it. Anybody, we are all cowards by nature. Man is a coward by nature. You know, in the garden, you, know, you read the Bible, it tells you that when Hazrat Adam and Mahawa, when they committed that mistake, and when God confronts them, he says, Adam, why are you behaving like this, plucking leaves and putting on yourself? What's wrong with you? He said, no, 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 he's the woman that thou gave us to me. She made me to eat. Look, the coward. He's blaming the poor woman. <laughs> and he's blaming Allah. He said, the woman thou gave us to me. You know, if you didn't give me that woman, I wouldn't be in trouble. <laughs> Look, the cowardliness of man. This portraying that we are all like that. And you woman? He said, no, it's the serpent that beguiled me, blaming the poor snake. <laughs> this is man. This is man. We are all like that. So somebody else die for your sin. What a pleasant feeling you get. You don't have to exert it. You don't have to sweat. You don't have to pray five times a day. You don't have to fast for one whole month. You don't have to straight jacket your life. You don't have to do that. You just have to believe that Christ died for your sins and salvation is yours. So he's got that. What is all this? Why do you waste time? It's not important. Important thing is Christ died for his sins. So I says, Dumini, you know, God Almighty, he knew this mentality of yours. What you're talking now, this was well known to him. So in verse 19, he warns. I was reading 1818. We were expounding 1818. But it says, verse 19, it says, and it shall come to pass, means it's going to happen. Allah knew. He said, look, it's gonna, it'll come to pass. This thing is going to happen. That whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he, that prophet, shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. I will I'll fix him up. In the Roman Catholic Bible, he says, I will take vengeance from him, take revenge. God is threatening revenge. I said, you know this thousand prophets you're talking about Christ? There's not one which is followed by such a threat. God Almighty himself is threatening, he said, I'm gonna take revenge. If you will not listen to that prophet, who will speak in my name, and it's going to come to pass, it's going to happen, that there will be guys like that, he said, I'll fix them up. God Almighty is threatening revenge. And he doesn't frighten you. We get terrified. Some gangster telling us, hey, we're coming home tonight to put matches to your house. Ooh, we can't sleep all night. You know, we want police protection. No? Allah, when he threatens, God Almighty he says, I am going to take revenge. And you say, it's not important. And I said, in whose name is Muhammad speaking? Whose name? Whose name is he speaking? He says, it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. His words, Allah's words, in my name, in Allah's name. I say, in whose name is Muhammad speaking? Look at the book. And this Yusuf Ali's translation has got a very beautiful arrangement. The end verses, end surahs, when you start from the very last, Surah Nas, chapter 114. You start with Surah Nas, every chapter, every page is a different chapter. Amazing. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Next page. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most every page is every chapter different page. Every page, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. In whose name is he speaking? In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Look how this prophecy is fitting the Holy Prophet Muhammad. It's fitting him like a glove. We don't have to pull, stretch, hook or by crook, trying to prove your case. We don't have to do that. It's fitting him like a glove. Every word, every chapter begins. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful.